This week in Nerf, we've got third-party mod kits and more Toys R Us store closures. I'm Jangular, and every Saturday morning, this is your source for first-party, third-party, and community Nerf news. Now, let's start with that Toys R Us news. Uh, when I initially started talking about the Toys R Us closures a while back, it was thought that it was only going to be North America that was going to be affected by this. That appears to not be the case anymore. Over in the UK, a number of Toys R Us stores are closing, amounting to potentially between 3,200 jobs and over 5,000 jobs being lost through the closures of these Toys R Us locations, which is terrible in its own right. And, and just a horrible thing that so many jobs and positions are being lost, but that's quite a few stores to be lost to, to account for that many employees. Um, I guess the silver lining that you can try and look for in this is that if you're in the UK and you have a Toys R Us near you, you can try and take advantage of some of the sales going on, but it seems that Toys R Us just cannot get a handle on their pricing structure. Everything has stayed too high for too long and they cannot compete with the internet market. And that's just destroying the company along with some of their bad business decisions and just overall failings, which is unfortunate because Toys R Us is such a massive household name in terms of retail locations. But uh, it just looks like this is just a continuing downfall for Toys R Us, which brought us some cool exclusives. I mean, you can't, whether you want Toys R Us to be around or not, you know, it is one less place that will have exclusives. That was the, the Sonic Ice series, the Sonic Blaze series. Um, I, I like those kinds of blaster exclusives and things like that. So I certainly don't like seeing these kinds of things and hope that Toys R Us will find a way to bounce back. But like I said, if you are in the UK and do have a Toys R Us near you that is closing, you can at least try and take advantage of some of the sales going on but like I said, I'm hoping that they will find a way to bounce back, to restructure, to figure things out, and maybe have a better online presence. Until that point, though, we may just keep seeing more of these uh, closures continue to happen, but we'll, we'll cross our fingers and hope that will not be the case or they'll figure things out. And hey, maybe their prices will become more competitive. They do have price matching, but it would look so much better if their prices just were lower on the shelves which I understand may not be realistic, but that's our hope. Moving on to something better, less, less sad in terms of closures and people leaving, losing jobs and things like that. Let's talk about Jet Blasters. Uh, they have been sharing a bit more lately and contacting people, and they actually got back to me when they got back in office from their vacation during the holiday and answered some questions I had about the Omega LS kit. And this is that now the pre-orders are up. The price is $130 for the pre-order, and it's going to be $180 when it goes live or uh, kits start shipping and it's no longer pre-order price. $130 is a significant drop from 180. Um, this is all a, a CNC anodized aluminum kit. Uh, they're going with gold or rose gold for your color selections. Personally, I kind of like rose gold and I kind of wouldn't mind getting one of these kits, kits in rose gold. I think that's kind of cool to have that all match, uh, especially with the trigger and the barrel and, and all that goodness. Now, I did ask some questions in terms of production, things like that, and uh, they, they wanted to emphasize that since the CETA was overhauled and had delays and all of that going on, they've kind of tried to re-energize and refocus on getting things out on time and, and to the customers when they say they will, which is great. I hope that they'll be able to. It's good that they've been posting a bit more, being a bit more interactive with people, it seemed like. We've seen images of the CETA production. We've also seen some stuff from the Omega, uh, the, the test versions, I believe, we've seen. And they currently have the Omega kit not in production, but getting prepped for production since it all is CNC'd rather than uh, injection molded like the CETA will be. So things seem to be moving along and I genuinely hope that they are moving along and we will see this at the end of June, which is what they've listed as their shipping date, June 30th. And pre-orders will go through the end of March for that. 
something, uh, a couple of things that I did ask them about um, the barrel length it has always been an issue in terms of the alpha kit when you try and push things a bit further, the barrel is just not long enough. Uh, it can't support the higher spring loads and you have to add things to help accommodate that. So they've retuned the barrel for the Omega kit to match the, I believe, 16 kilogram spring that is coming with the kit and shipping with that. So it should be optimized for that kit spring. And one of the things that I asked that I was very pleased to get the response on was I thought it would be cool if we started seeing various barrel lengths that they shipped out and sold separately. So for people that wanted to run different springs, they could have barrels tuned to that length that use their threaded system that I really think is cool. And they got back and said, yes, this year, in fact, they do have plans to release uh, different barrel lengths and different IDs for all of these kits, for the Omni, for the Alpha, for the Omega, all of that stuff. And I think that's really, really cool and something I am very much looking forward to and actually is making me want one of these kits or just any, I won't say any, I'm not really looking into the Al or the Omni, but either the Alpha or the Omega kit. Uh, it's making me want to be in their ecosystem a little bit more, have a blaster that is in that ecosystem at least. So it's something that I, I'm, I'm going to be cautiously optimistic for. I, I prefer to be hopeful in terms of what direction the community will go and companies will go rather than assuming the worst. A, hopefully we'll get the best. That's what I'm gonna cross my fingers for. But let's stick with uh, third-party companies as well here. And we got one more topic and that is Orange Mod Works. They have been re reinvigorated and renewed their line as well. They have some new components. They've got uh, a rolled aluminum plunger tube and a aluminum barrel. And uh, this plunger tube, I believe, is, is a wider diameter than the stock plunger tube. And they also have some SLA printed parts like the breech and some of the pieces that go in the plunger tube and all of that good stuff. And uh, it's definitely interesting to see SLA printing starting to crop up now in the hobby and what can be done with that. And they actually did a very lengthy video install of their new components and new kit stuff along with their 20 kilogram spring into a long shot and showed what can be done in terms of performance with all of their components and they got some solid numbers up over 250 260 uh, to 270 range even in their video and that's i mean this this was with cut down elite darts keep in mind so those numbers will be lower for using worker darts or most aftermarket darts are going to get lower numbers than the elite darts. So bear that in mind, but I still think it's nice to see more options. You know, I like options and I like that Orange Mobworks is trying to come back and create another line of products that people will use that hopefully will be solid performers and people will enjoy and find good uses for. These are not full on kits. Orange Mobworks is selling parts. So we kind of have the, the jet, blasters, uh, kit ecosystem, and then you have Orange Mob Works that just does parts that you can put together into your own kits, but it's nice to have kind of options, but somewhat different in terms of, of what you're getting. So I think that's definitely something interesting. I'm gonna have a video to that guide down below as well, because it was interesting to watch and kind of get a talk through of their idea and process and all of that as they're putting a long shot together. So that's something you can take a look into as well. That is going to bring us to our mod of the week though. And this comes to us from Nerf Gunsmith. And this is the Cento Fury. This thing is just cool. It's just cool looking. This is, this is a Centurion and Roto Fury integration. And it looks like an awesome LARP blaster. Uh, as soon as I saw this, I was like, yep, that, I like that. I'm into the way that looks. Obviously, I'm not going to take it to a public game, but if you're playing on a private property or you're playing in a, a LARP or something like that, or you just want a nice display piece, the front end on this thing looks so cool. I really, really dig the way this blaster came out, and it probably uh, functions just fine in terms of performance. I don't expect it to be a you know NIC style primary but if you took this to a LARP it's probably going to do everything you need it to do for that game and like I said I really just like the way this looks I think it's super cool looking and uh, I really really have to give credit to uh, Nerf Gunsmith for the way they went about that front end I think it's it appeals to me 
I dig it. Hopefully, you dig it. if you want to see some more detailed shots and close-up shots and whatnot of this blaster, I do have the links down below to their Facebook page and post and all of that good stuff. So go check that out. That's going to bring us to our last thing for today, and that is the video of the week. This week, we're going with a video from Vim Fuego, and this is a paint weathering tutorial. Uh, it is fairly detailed, fairly in-depth. It is not using a Nerf blaster, important to note, but it is using... Uh, it's going through the process that you can use and apply it to Nerf Blasters as they talk about in the video itself. And it's always interesting to me to see the different methods people use, the, way, the ways that people kind of come to a conclusion and the paths they take that may be different and may yield slightly different results. Uh, and it may be better for one person than it is for another person. So I think it's always nice to present those options for people so you can watch something and even if you say, you know, that look isn't quite what I want, but that method is interesting. Maybe I can apply that to something else in my projects. And that to me is, is something that's just so valuable. And I think this is something that's interesting and worth watching. And especially since we uh, did see a little bit of that kind of rustic um, metallic look from our mod of the week, I thought, why not throw this in if case you want to do something a little bit more edgy as well. And we're trying to have some synergy here. We'll try and get that to all to work together. But regardless, if you want to watch that video, it is going to be right over here. And if you have any suggestions for videos or mods of the week, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And let me know what you thought of everything in this week's episode. The Omega Kit, the Orange Mod Works parts, uh, Toys R Us closing down in the UK as well. Leave it all down below. I love hearing from all of you. And just a reminder, every Saturday morning, 7 a.m. PST, Nerf news here, and throughout the week we do do reviews, gameplay videos, and other good stuff like that. So if you're new to the channel and enjoyed this video, feel free to hit the subscribe button for more in the future. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jangular, and I'll see you next time.